untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green Devotion ramp deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Now that we finally have access to Nykthos Shrine to Nyx on Arena, thanks to the latest anthology expansion. So Nykthos is a legendary land, means we can only have one in play at the same time, but it is incredibly powerful, can pay two mana, tap it, choose green in this case, adding an amount of green mana to our mana pool equal to our devotion to that color. So then we have to count all the green mana symbols on our permanence, so that includes our mana creatures as well as our enchantments and planeswalkers, which can quickly add up when you have triple green devotion from old growth troll. So Nykthos can add a ton of extra mana, which allows us to kind of combo off, especially with Kiora, which can untap or lands as well, so we can potentially activate Nykthos multiple times in the same turn. Even Nyssa can animate or Nykthos into a creature, so we can maybe tap it a second time. And then with all that extra mana, what's our end goal? Well, we can play Karn the Great Creator, which gives us access to a bunch of sideboard curve toppers, like maybe a Cityscape Leveler at 8 mana, which can destroy an opposing non-land permanent when we cast it and whenever it attacks. And I'm also playing one Portal to Phyrexia, just as another expensive curve topper that can make the opponent sacrifice three creatures when it enters and then reanimates a creature turn after turn. Now we don't have access to the Chain Veil on Arena, so the typical pioneer builds of Mono Green Devotion have access to Oath of Nyssa at one mana, which we're still missing, and then they also have the Chain Veil in the sideboard, which allows some of these Planeswalkers to activate multiple times in the same turn, and that means if you have enough Devotion and enough mana to begin with, you can potentially combo off in one big turn with Kiora untapping Nykthos, and then Karn tutoring various artifacts out of the sideboard, including the Chain Chain Veil, and then eventually also getting Pestilent Cauldron, which is an artifact, so that satisfies Karn's condition, so we can get it with a minus two, but we can also cast the backside of Cauldron, which is the restorative burst, to get multiple cards back from our graveyard, and because the burst exiles itself, we can also access it with Karn's minus two ability, which is pretty interesting. So that can set up a pretty convoluted infinite combo, if you have enough mana to start out, to eventually combo kill the opponent by gaining a ton of life with burst, eventually casting Cauldron, and milling the opponent out. So that's not what we're doing here, instead we're just ramping into Leveler and Portal to Phyrexia, and hopefully that's good enough, but Karn's still very good as a mana sink and as a toolbox card, which can also give us some graveyard hate for certain combo decks, Pithing Needle to shut down activated abilities, including opposing Planeswalkers, we've got the Stone Brain as a new tool from the Brother's War, which is also great against combo decks, and then the Sky Sovereign great against creatures, can also maybe finish off Planeswalkers, and then Statue if we're ahead on mana, can also make it very difficult for the opponent to come back as we're gonna tax all their spells by two. Can also maybe animate it with Karn to start beating down with a 6-6, which is pretty fun. And then as we mentioned, a leveler and portal. And then going over the rest of our deck, at one mana we've got Elvish Mystic and Talanor Elves, which can set up those explosive starts. At two mana, Wolf Hollow Haven increases our devotion, can enchant our land, and then we can maybe untap that land with Kiora to generate extra mana, so that's also pretty neat synergy. And then I've got a one of Paradise Druid as one of the flex slots, just to give me a little bit more acceleration in case I don't find my Elves or Haven. And then a one-off Voracious Hydra, not the best card to find off Storm the Festival, admittedly, but can be a nice mana sink if we have a ton of mana with Nykthos. Also adds a bunch of devotion so we can play it early to maybe fight a small creature from the opponent, and later in the game we can maybe double its power and toughness to take over the game, especially on a board stall. And then at 3 mana I'm also trying out two copies of Corsair of Crufix, also one of these flex slots that you can easily replace, but since it was added in the latest Explorer Anthology expansion, I thought I would try it out here and see how it performs. Can help us play Lands of the Top, gain some life back as well. Could also play Augur of Autumn to do something similar, although as a 2-4 Corsair is a little harder to kill and will help out against those aggressive burn strategies. And then four copies of Old Growth Troll, as we mentioned, and Triple Devotion. As a 4-4 it also draws a card with Kiora, and if it dies it can still enchant one of our forests to tap for double green, so similar to Haven also synergizes quite nicely with Kiora, and also stacks nicely with Wolf Willow Haven, which we can also put several Havens on the same land, since it can make green mana when it becomes tapped, so that's a little bit different from how the enchantment from the Troll works, which just says the land taps for double green to begin with, so the enchantment from the Troll doesn't stack in multiples, but Haven does, so if we have both on the same land we can potentially tap a land for 3 mana and then untap it with Kiora. 
And then at 4 mana we've got Karn, at 5 mana a full set of Cavalier of Thorns and Triple Devotion, and when the Cavalier enters the battlefield we reveal the top 5 cards of our library and then potentially put a land among those onto the battlefield untapped, so that can help us find or nick those to begin with, and we can potentially, if we have some floating mana left, still activate that same nick those in that turn to keep comboing off. And then by putting those cards in the graveyard afterwards we can also potentially mill Storm the Festival to flash it back, so the Cavalier has a ton of synergy here. And then two copies of Nyssa, another one of these flex slots since we don't have Oath of Nyssa, so I had to round out the deck with some other cards, but seems pretty good in a mono green deck that has a ton of forests and can also help untap our Nykthos, and a pretty fun hit to find with Storm the Festival, which is our final curve topper here. Six mana sorcery, look at the top five cards of our library to put two permanent cards with mana value five or less from among them onto the battlefield, so sometimes we're just happy to find a Nykthos with it, but of course can also find our Cavalier and various Planeswalkers, and then and even if we find a Kiora to untap Nykthos, we can maybe keep making more mana to flash back Storm the Festival in the same turn, which will cost us 10 mana. And then the rest of our mana base, 15 for us to go with Nyssa, Buseichu for some interaction, and double Lair of the Hydra, which can also be a nice mana sink if we start comboing with our Nykthos. So yeah, that's our mono green devotion, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a nice hand. Missing Nykthos, but Mystic into Haven. Goes well with Kiora as well, which can then untap our enchanted land. And then hopefully draw something like a troll to draw a card. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one planes into hopefully initiate, so white aggro. Also got a new tool with Brave the Elements. So that can potentially make their team unblockable against a mono green deck. For now, just play Cura and pass, and then next turn can play Haven and still play Karn afterwards. So really hoping to find some large creatures. Cavalier of Thorns would be great. So for now, just gonna go with Haven plus Karn. And then what to do with Karn is a question. Nature flows with vigor. Probably gonna lose Karn to an attack next turn. Sky Sovereign could be a way to stabilize. Next turn I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. So I could already get a Cityscape Leveler, not quite enough for Portal to Phyrexia. And that's assuming our opponent just kills Karn. They could also go after Kiora. Or maybe have removal for Elvish Mystic. So, Cityscape Leveler versus Sky Sovereign. I think I prefer Leveler here. Could maybe also draw with Kiora. Opponent has the Apparition, so that can go after Kiora perhaps. Goes after Karn. And then it can attack Kiora with her creatures. But opponent seems to go face instead. So yeah, next turn, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Can't trade for the officer here. So we'll take 6. And a Nykthos to draw. So doesn't really generate any additional mana yet. But uh, I guess it's nice to have. The play Leveler and then probably go after Skyclave to generate an extra blocker. Opponent can destroy the Cityscape Leveler with the two counters from Hopeful Initiate. But we also get to draw two cards now with Kiora, one from the Illusion, one from Leveler. And then now a Troll will increase our Devotion, and Storm the Festival is great too. Opponent passes. Okay, so now we get to really combo off. So how about we play a Troll and an Elf? Those are mana neutral with Nykthos out, which is pretty crazy. Play another elf. Now activate Nykthos. Untap Nykthos. Play an elf. And then activate Nykthos again with a floating mana. To storm the festival. 
Now we still have to watch out for Brave the Elements here, which could certainly still kill us if we're not careful. Let's activate Nykthos. Can flash back storm the festival. And what do we find? I could get Kiora Karn, untap my Nykthos once again, and then we should have enough mana to play Portal to Phyrexia, so I think that's the move as opposed to getting Cavalier. Just enough. And then now we should be safe from a Brave the Elements. I guess it also helps that we have a blue creature here and an artifact creature. And let's attack. Sweet, so managed to combo off against Mono White. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems fine. Mystic Double Haven. Can set up an early Cavalier. Could also play turn 2 Troll if that's maybe better in the matchup. But if we're facing another green ramp strategy, I would rather just uh, go Double Haven here. Especially when we don't have Nykthos to abuse the extra devotion from Troll. Next turn Cavalier, hopefully find Nykthos. Opponent's got it. Can be a little awkward early if you want to play turn 2 Troll and you don't have two forests, then that can hold you back. But opponent's got a very explosive turn here. Okay, so play Cavalier and then... Hope for the best. And we did find a Nykthos. No Storm the Festival in the Graveyard, which would be the next best thing here. One's got a Cura, so this Nykthos about to go off. Let's see what Curve Topper they can conjure. If our opponent has a Karn, we could be in trouble. Storm the Festival could also be bad. Just an old growth troll, does increase their devotion and draws. So now 8 mana, and there's Storm the Festival. So we'll see. They can still flash it back potentially if they find another Nykthos. Cavalier draws with Kira. And they did find a second Nykthos, so opponent gets to keep going. Interestingly, they kept a tapped Nykthos, so. Maybe a missequence. Alright, so we get another turn here. And how do we want to go about it? I guess play a troll first to increase our devotion. Probably wouldn't be using a lair, but you never know. And then use Nykthos. Play another Cavalier. And just a forest. Alright, so opponent's definitely in the driver's seat here with another Storm of the Festival to flash back. And Kiora providing card advantage. So whoever can find a Karn first is probably going to run away with the game. Flashback Storm the Festival. So that one was not quite as impactful. Three cards in hand still. Cavalier can just bounce off of each other. So that's not gonna get anything back. Opponent sacrificing a haven to make a wolf. That's fine. So it looks like we're back in a top deck battle. Forest, not the best one. I think I should still play it. And then do we want to activate Lair of the Hydra to start beating down? Nothing too scary your opponent can get back, so I guess that's fine. So X equals 19. They could easily have another Kiora in hand, so I'm just going to attack her opponent directly, I think. Opponent jumps with a wolf. Let's 
And they've got their own lair. They can untap it with Kiora. Three points devotions, 12. Even with the four extra mana from the elves, I guess that maybe lets them block profitably. Unless I want to use an extra Nykthos here just to grow the lair. Don't know if that's quite worth it. So maybe we just pass and keep this for a turn where we maybe go off with a Storm the Festival. Another Cavalier. Finds a Boseju. Karn goes to the graveyard, so we have to be careful now if Cavalier dies. Opponent can untap Nykthos with Kyora to make a larger Lair of the Hydra. So if I were to block with Cavalier of Thorns, I can get back Nyssa. Probably not the most impactful card here. Alright, so that's a 27-27. So do we want to block it? Could go for a Voracious Hydra as well, which isn't bad. Can sink all our extra Nykthos mana into it. So we'll jump with Cavalier. Get back Voracious Hydra. And take our draw step. So let's float our mana. And we probably want to activate Nykthos there. Play another one. And then X equals 26. And we probably want to just double its power and toughness. And then hope our opponent doesn't have Karn to get removal for Hydra. Opponent passes. So they can make about a 25-25 layer of the Hydra. So 25 plus another 16. So we're getting to around 40. So considering if I want to attack with everyone, including a big lair. If that's lethal here. So I think we go for it here. Activate Nykthos. And that's a 1919 lair. And we'll just go face with everyone. So let's double check the math here. Opponent's got 15 devotion, 16 plus 5, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So let's say 24, 24 lair or 23, 23 keep visionary back. So 23 plus 18 is 41. So 11 goes through. They have to jump lair. Yeah, I think this is good enough. At least I'll have to give up a lot of creatures in the process, just to survive. So 21, 21 layer. That goes under the Hydra. And then if we're not necessarily killing the opponent here, we can also decide not to kill the Cavalier of Thorns and instead deal more damage to Lair of the Hydra just to make sure they don't get Karn back, which could maybe find an answer for Voracious Hydra. So let's make sure the settings are correct here. So we're not auto-assigning damage. And then I should probably switch this off as well. Okay, so we'll put Lair first. So currently we have 19 going through, so it's not quite lethal. 
uh, any of the tramplers going through. I guess there's uh, an old growth troll. So we actually have lethal if we trample over. Otherwise I would have just uh, not assigned lethal damage to any cavaliers to make sure they don't get anything back from the graveyard. So yeah, close one here in the Green Devotion Mirror. Despite not finding Storm the Festival, Voracious Hydra got it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we've got a Keeper, Mystic, Double Haven to ramp into Nyssa. And we've got our Nykthos ready to add a ton of green mana. Let's see what we're up against. Green-white could be Angel Life Gain. And for now, we can play Haven and play Second Haven. And I'll spread them out. Could put them on the same lands so that if we untap with Nyssa, it's maybe a little bit better. But it also plays into a removal. Turn to Youthful Valkyrie, so Angel Life Gain confirmed. Okay, so Nykthos has three Devotion at the moment, so it's not netting us extra mana, but once I play another Elves it will. So let's say we play another Elf, make four mana, then I can still play Anissa afterwards. That sounds good. Although we don't really need Nykthos here necessarily. So I'll just untap Forest here and attack. Could still play Hydra, which would be for two, so not enough to kill Youthful Valkyrie, so we'll wait. Now we've got six Devotion. So now we're happy to top deck Karn as another nice curve topper. Cavalier of Thorns, Storm the Festival, all great top decks at this point. Skyclave does not get to exile our land, but can go after a Wolf of Haven. So that's fine. Another Nykthos. It is legendary, so probably don't want to play another unless we're planning to just sink a ton of mana into a large Hydra, which may be fine here. We have quite a few options, including animating Nykthos with Nyssa to untap it. So let's say we make some Nykthos mana. Let's animate Nykthos into a creature. Rise, my elemental friend. Make some mana. Play another Nykthos. Add some more mana. And then this would be for x equals 14. That seems good enough. Or we could make it x equals 12 and then fight a flyer and then we can still attack don't want to double the counters in case your opponent has another skyclave apparition and so now we're doing a good job of protecting nissa which can maybe ultimate at some point opponent might have a collected company in hand so either way, we can uh, play an old growth troll here. Animate forest, maybe. And then opponent could potentially present some surprise blockers. So I don't think we attack with the one ones. So there's company and hopefully it's not too devastating. Resplendent and Speaker, that's reasonable. Opponent double blocks our forest. And that's acceptable. And that leaves them dead, so they had to jump with a Resplendent. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, hand seems fine. Mystic into a turn 2 Kiora. And then Troll will draw. Hopefully find some more exciting 5 drops afterwards. Opponent blue-white. And we can even play another Mystic here if we'd like. 
Still have our lair as a mana sink, especially if we find Nykthos. Mutavolt does point towards a creature strategy. So I'm not sure what's going on here with a turn 2 Prophetic Prism. Well, let's hope this old growth troll can draw into some goodies. Alright, just a forest, so we're definitely flooding here. Just untap Mystic and attack for two. And then next turn we can fire up our creature land. Glass Casket, good answer to Troll, exiling it without giving us the enchantment. And another Mystic the draw. Okay, so... Instead of playing a Mystic into potential board wipe, I think we just attack with Lair. X equals 3. Crystal Grotto. Is your opponent some sort of blue-white artifact deck? They could also have Metallic Rebuke in hand, which they might have been able to improvise the last turn. And a Thought Knot Seer, that makes sense. So that's why they're playing those Coldless Sources. Okay, so we'll just animate a larger layer now. Do we let Thought Knot Seer attack Kiora, or do we just untap and play an elf on defense? Maybe that's better. Let's make a 5 5 lair. Opponents down to 8, attacks Kyora. I'll trump. Might be able to string together some larger creatures here. And there's a Karn. Can maybe get another removal spell or something big to play next turn. Gets a Pithing Needle, so that can shut down Kyora or Lair of the Hydra. And Cavalier was a great draw. Okay, so let's play Cavalier. Draw with Kiora, and we'll grab a forest and draw a land. Okay, so we'll just attack Karn here. This will not if Cavalier were to die, we can get our own Karn, which I imagine is going to be pretty good against an artifact deck. Ooh, a Supreme Verdict, okay. So we'll grab Karn. And then we also get to draw Thought Not Seer. So we draw Karn right away. Karn's gonna plus to animate caskets. Can go after Kiora. Leave my squids alone. And a lands into Prophetic Prism, so don't need to worry about Metallic Rebuke at least. We'll follow Haven the draw. If I were to just play Karn. We have five mana essentially, so I could get Sky Sovereign to finish off the opponent's Karn. Or I could kill the Glass Caskets to get my Old Growth Troll back, which is also reasonable. And then I might as well play Haven first. Your opponent can pressure Karn with their Mutavolt. Statuary, so they're ramping up to something big. The non artifact spells have improvised, so all these now tap for mana, and an Ugin, the Spirit Dragon's a pretty good one. So that kills Karn. 
really wanted to be able to crew Sky Sovereign here. So we could finish off Ugin, but now we can't. Even if I make a wolf, that's not good enough. We can't animate Lair because of Pithing Needle. So, yeah, I guess play Nykthos and pass. Ugin's pretty good against the Devotion deck, as you can imagine. If you can get it out in time. So next turn can minus 10 and ultimate. Opponent is tapped out, so if we find a creature to help crew Sky Sovereign, we might still be okay. And a Courser of Crufix helps. So I guess I'll play a Courser. And then Nykthos could also activate potentially. If I make a Wolf Token first and then play Courser, they can still kill the Wolf Token in response to me crewing Sky Sovereign, so I don't think that makes a difference. Another Courser on top. So can activate Nykthos, not that it really generates more mana. And then try and crew Sky Sovereign. And that can go after Ugin. So now Ugin cannot minus 3 anymore. And another Courser can help crew Sky Sovereign, even if they plus on the Wolf. Casket is going to change that. So Courser gone. Fennec Prism draws. And Ugin kills our Wolf. Really want to see another Cavalier of Thorns, for instance. Karn shuts down Sky Sovereign's crew ability, so the game's probably over now, unless we can string together some epic top decks. Finds a Cityscape Leveler, which they can cast, and a Matter Reshaper, just another cheap blocker. And Mutavolt hits for two. Alright, well, we don't have much of a choice here. Play Courser, another Lair, doesn't do much with Pithing Needle out, and Nykthos coming up. So Ugin can minus three if they'd like, although I think it does give us our creatures back from Glass Casket if they would do that. So Leveler instead, kill Sky Sovereign just to be safe. And Karn can minus to get another big curve topper. I guess we'll uh, take it here, otherwise Ugin can finish off Courser easily. So we get our things back. And opponent gets their own Sky Sovereign. Karn on top. Wouldn't be able to draw that one just yet. So... I can finish off Ugin at least, if I attack with both, although I think I leave myself dead on the way back if I do that. With uh, a leveler reshaper and then Mutavolt hitting for exactly 13, although I guess we gain one of Courser. So yeah, I guess killing Ugin is the way to go here. And I should gain my one life while I can. Although I guess Karn could also animate an artifact, so I probably still die, but this is my best chance. So yeah, Pithing Needle on Lair of the Hydra early on definitely had an impact. Never found our Storm the Festival to really go over the top. So I think that does it. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and it's a one-lander, but with triple elves, and then Kiora to ramp into Cavalier. So it might still be a keep. Ideally draw land so we can go Kira plus Elves. Thought Season Cavalier could also be effective, but it's going to be an Eye Twitch instead. 
Okay, so Kira plus Elves, and then next turn hopefully Cavalier draw a card and keep the ball rolling. Snow mana points towards a Blood on the Snow, which could also be quite effective against us. For now, second Eye Twitch. And an attack for one. Okay, Karn's great too. So, play Cavalier for now. And finds just a forest is fine. Okay, maybe get back with Seiju to actually use it later. No Nykthos yet, which would be quite strong here with a lot of green devotion. Tenacious Underdog's fine. Opponent hangs back. So we can play Karn, and what do we get with Karn is a question. We'll have quite a bit of mana to work with. Godfarer's statue might be decent when our opponent's stuck on two. And then I don't expect any sweeper for three mana necessarily. Could attack with Cavalier and then untap it with Kiora. Opponent might be able to learn for environmental sciences to get an extra land, but that's fine. So our opponent's kind of locked into getting a land next turn. And then we can slam down a statue and keep tutoring with Karn. No thought sees is good. So yeah, let's go for it. Statue, and then we can keep attacking with Cavalier. Karn can minus again. Opponent chumps. Another environmental sciences. So what to get with Karn? Something to try and close out the game quickly. So Portal to Phyrexia, or a Cityscape Leveler comes to mind. And then I'll untap Cavalier to play defense here. We can also animate our God for a statue with Karn, so it can start beating down as a 6-6. Just have to watch out for removal. So our opponent currently unable to cast Environmental Sciences. Opponent explodes, so yeah, quick statue got the job done, although their opponent was already struggling. Okay, we're on the play. Decent hand. Haven into Kiora, and then Troll can draw. And hopefully find a Nykthos, since we have a lot of devotion here. Let's see what we're facing. Turn one Elves. Definitely expect a lot of mirror matches early on in the format here, with the new Anthology expansion. They've got the Nykthos. And a Haven. So we can play Cura, untap Haven, play Troll, and next turn Storm the Festival. Opponent could have a Cavalier, or maybe their own Storm the Festival. There's Cavalier. Another Cavalier hits the graveyard. Okay, I think storming the festival is going to be our best move. So untap our haven so we can storm the festival. And take it from there. Finding just two elves. Probably still better than double forests. Increase our devotion some more. And pass. Bones got her own storm. And found Nissa plus a forest. So they could add a ton of mana with Nykthos, untap it with Nissa. Karn as well, so yeah, I think this game's over now. Karn can minus. Gets the stone brain. So not sure if they're gonna go after Storm the Festival here or Karn. 
Once we play our own Karn, we would have been able to shut it down. Opponent goes after Nykthos, that also makes sense. So that's gone. So what are my options here? Can play Karn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get a Sky Sovereign to kill the opponent's Karn, perhaps. They'll still have a Nissa in play, but we can try and attack that later. I guess we'll keep some elves untapped. One drop rips and grows. There is always another fight. Bone can flashback storm the festival. And we'll see what they get. Just a Lovestruck Beast and a Haven. So they've got a lot of mana, but not really any great curve toppers, it seems. Never mind, Voracious Hydra for 8. It's gonna fight our troll, might as well cruise Sky Sovereign. And then I guess we'll enchant the same land so we can maybe untap it with Kiora. Cavalier goes after Karn, so now we actually have a window to kill Nyssa. So that's great. Now I currently don't have enough creatures to crew Sky Sovereign unless I sacrifice Haven, or we can just plus Karn on Sky Sovereign to turn it into a creature and finish off Nyssa. Okay, find a Courser, so that can help Crew as well. So play this, Crew Sky Sovereign, and then what does Karn do? Maybe we're better off getting like a Cityscape Leveler here. Or a Portal to Phyrexia. What does your opponent get back? They could get back Karn or Cavalier if Cavalier dies. So let's say we add double green, so that's three. Sure, and that also draws with Kiora. Find a land, can still maybe play a land off the top with Courser. Get that value. And then crew maybe keeping a leveler back. And kill Nissa. Okay, planeswalker down. Opponent does still have a lot of mana, but our board is looking better now. Troll's fine. And our opponent goes all out. So for now we'll just block a Lovestruck Beast. We're at 9. Play my land of the top. And then we could storm the festival as our first step. Or do we want to maybe Karn and get a portal to Phyrexia and play that? Since I'm not sure if we can find anything more impactful with storm the festival really. So maybe plus on Sky Sovereign so I don't need to crew it. And our opponent explodes, so close game here in the mirror match, but we got it done. Alright, so we got to see our mono green Devotion deck in action, and expect a lot of mirror matches in the coming weeks as people experiment with the Nykthos now that it's finally on Arena. So maybe fine-tune your decks to beat Green Devotion 
in the green devotion mirror match cards like voracious hydra can be nice mana sinks to kind of break a stalemate if both players manage to go off with nykthos so having some of those big mana sinks is important and that's also the reason why i've added the extra portal to phyrexia as a nice curve topper to potentially get with karn since we don't really have the way to go infinite without the chain veil in arena so yeah that's going to do it for today's gameplay i want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.